Hello and welcome to another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 1, Lesson 4 on Types of Angles. Now in the last lesson we looked at what angles were, specifically the idea that they were two rays that shared a common vertex, all right, and we also looked at how we measured them using degrees along a circle. Today what we're going to do is we're going to look at different types of angles because types of angles are very important in geometry. Now a little bit of what we do today is going to involve some algebra and some sort of calculations. So what I've done is I've kind of brought a nice Texas Instruments scientific calculator along with me. I would suggest that you might want one of these as well. And throughout the course, most of the calculator work we do will be sort of purely numerical work, stuff that really a simple scientific calculator or maybe the calculator on your phone will get the job done. There might be occasions in the course where we want to use a graphing calculator as well, but those are a few units down the road, so there's no worry about that at this point. For right now, I'm going to put our TI Smart View away, and let's get into the lesson. Let's talk about classifying angles. An angle is the object formed, as I mentioned, by joining two rays at a common vertex. The degree measure of an angle is the amount of rotation that separates the two rays, right? And that can go anywhere from zero degrees up to 360 degrees. We classify angles based on how large the angle is that separates them. So let's talk about all the different types of angles. So the first, maybe most common type, is an acute angle. An acute angle has a measure between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. The word acute comes from the Latin word for sharpening. These angles look sharp or pointy. All right, so acute angles are between 0 and 90, right? They look sharp and pointy, okay? They're less than a quarter of a turn. All right, now kind of almost the opposite of an acute angle is an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle has a measure between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. These are the opposite of acute angles and will look blunt or dull. All right, so just like an acute angle, I've got a nice picture of an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is larger than 90 degrees, but not larger than 180 degrees. Now let's get into some very specific ones. A right angle. A right angle has a measure of 90 degrees. It represents exactly one quarter of a full rotation. It is one of the most important angles in all of mathematics because it indicates two directions that are completely independent of one another, such as the x and y axes on a coordinate grid or north and east on a map. All right, really, really important, right? 90 degree angles or right angles. These are absolutely critical angles. They show up all over the place, rectangles, squares, you know, Everywhere we see 90 degree angles, one quarter of a full turn. Now a straight angle, let's talk about that. A straight angle has a measure of 180 degrees. A straight angle represents exactly one half of a full rotation. It would look indistinguishable from a straight line with all points along a straight angle being collinear. All right, now this is kind of weird because Literally, we think about angles as being kind of like turns, right? All right, how much do I have to turn here, right? But a straight angle literally is indistinguishable from a straight line, except at some point you say, well, there's my vertex, right? So if I sort of rotated that ray so it fell on top of that ray, it would take me a half a rotation to get it over to that one. But keep in mind, if I picked any three points along a straight angle, they would be collinear. Now, finally, the least important of all the angles we're going to look at is what's known as a reflex angle. A reflex angle has a measure between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. Unless otherwise noted, we will not work with reflex angles in the early part of this course. All right, so all angles that we look at are going to be between 0 and 180, and they could be 180 if they're straight angles. But for the record, right, we could look at a rotation that is more than 180 degrees, and that would be called a reflex angle. The thing that's confusing about a reflex angle is, right, that you also have this particular angle here, this obtuse angle, right, that is not a reflex angle. All right. So let's take a look at exercise number one. Each type of angle is shown below. Judging by sight alone, which maybe we shouldn't do, but we're going to, judging by sight alone, 
Classify each angle as acute, obtuse, right, straight, or reflex. All right, awesome. Well, you have all the definitions up above. Pause the video now and classify each of these angles. All right, well, this is pretty easy, right? This one is an obtuse angle. This is a reflex angle, right? More than 180. Here's our acute angle. This is our straight angle. And this one is the hardest one to tell, but it is our right angle. Now, don't get me wrong, right? This one certainly is the diciest of them all. We would literally have to take out a protractor and measure it to see if it was exactly equal to 90 degrees. I suppose the same would have to be true about the straight angle as well. The first three, there's pretty much no getting around it. Obtuse, reflex, acute. But these two, we'd really kind of have to have that protractor to see if they actually are 180 degrees and 90 degrees. But just based on looks, that's what we're going we're gonna to say. All right, exercise number two. Find the measure of each of the following angles, then classify it as acute, obtuse, or right. Name the angle using the three-letter combination. Okay, great. So let's take a look at measuring an angle. Right? We did this once before, but we didn't actually use our own protractor. This time we're going to. All right. So I'm going to bring my protractor up. I'm going to set it so that the vertex is at the center of the protractor. Now, one thing that's tricky about protractors, whether you're using a digital one like I am, or you're using one that, um, let me see if I can make this a bit bigger, or you're using one that you've got sort of in your hand right now, is that all protractors pretty much have two scales. They have one that goes this way, and they have one that goes this way, okay? So when you look at that line, right, and you're reading off your degree measure, you gotta know which one to read. So when I look at this angle, I should say, well, that's an obtuse angle. Now I notice that it's both pointing at a 70 up here and a 110 down here. Well, that is a 110 degree angle. It is certainly not a 70 degree angle. The 70 degree angle would be the one that from here up to here, right? From sort of the left ray up to this. This one I'm reading blah, 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 like that. So this is a 108, oh, sorry, a 110 degree angle. And I'm going to say the measure of angle TVM is 110 degrees. Or you could say that the measure of angle MVT equals 110 degrees. All right? Doesn't matter whether you say TVM or MVT, but the directions did say use the three letter naming system. All right, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and measure this angle, that angle, and then write down their measurements using the proper notation. Don't forget the little M in front of the angle symbol for measure of. Well, this one, uh, angle U, Y-O-U, uh, is a 90 degree angle. And again, it's a little bit tricky because, at least for me, uh oh it's a little tricky because I have to bring this thing in. I need to kind of rotate it and reposition it. That's probably where it's going to be a, a bit easier for you than me. But if I do this, what I can definitely see, if I can get it to shrink, oh, there it is. It's a little bit better. Is that if I have the zero here, that ray then goes through 90. All right? So that is a 90 degree angle. It's a right angle. And I'm going to say that the measure of angle Y O U is 90 degrees. All right, simple enough. Let's measure CAT, C A T. All right, here we go. Again, what I need to do now is sort of rotate this thing so that the one of the rays goes through a zero. And then what I'll see is if I look at this particular ray of this acute angle, is it goes through 45. And again, a little bit hard for you to see on your screen, but the measure of angle CAT 
is equal to 45 degrees. Nice acute angle there. 45 degree angle is also a very important angle because it's half of 90 degrees. So it is an eighth of a turn, an eighth of the way around a circle. All right, let's take a look at exercise number three. Given WRX, segment WRX, solve for the value of X and find the numerical values of the measure of angle VRX and the measure of angle WRV. All right. Well, this is the first time we've really seen a problem like this, right? Where we combine algebra with geometry. It's not going to be the last time. In fact, you'll see this a ton where we have to take some idea in geometry and use it to set up a problem in algebra. Now, what's really going on? Well, the first thing is we really have to be clear about what this piece of information is telling us. It almost seems like that's a throwaway, like, oh, they just said something. But what WRX with a segment bar above it tells us is that these three points, W, R, and X, are collinear. Now you might say, well, I can tell. I can see that they fall along a straight line. Well, you know, how do I know there isn't like a little bend right at R? You know what I mean? How do I know that? Well, I know that because of this statement. And what that tells me is it tells me that the measure of angle WRX is equal to 180 degrees. That I know for certain, okay, because it's a straight angle. Now, I also know that WRX is going to be the sum of WRV and VRX. In fact, let me just state that, right? I know that the measure of angle WRV plus the measure of angle VRX must be equal to that 180 degrees. They must add up to be that straight angle. Now I can set up my algebraic equation because the measure of WRV is 3X plus 22. The measure of VRX is 2X minus 12. And now I'm off to the races. It's very often in a situation like this that I and many math teachers will drop the degree symbol as we work through the algebra. We'll bring it back at the end. What I'd like you to do is pause the video now and see if you can solve this equation. After passing algebra one, it hopefully won't be any issue for you. All right, well, let's combine some like terms. I have a 3x and a 2x, that's a 5x. A positive 22 and a negative 12 gives me a positive 10. Positive 10, that's equal to 180. I'm gonna subtract a 10 from both sides. That's going to give me 5x is equal to 170. I'm gonna divide both sides by five, and this is where if you don't really wanna do the arithmetic in your head, right, that's why you've got your little scientific calculator and you're just ready and it's, ah, 170 divided by five, great. X is equal to 34. I'm gonna put that away or at least put it over here. Now that's one thing the problem asked me for. What is the value of X? But the other thing that it asked, and we always wanna answer what is being asked in geometry, is what are the numerical values of the measure of angle VRX and the measure of angle WRV? Well, let's just take them in order. VRX, right? Well, the measure of angle VRX, right, is 2x minus 12, so that's gonna be two times 34 minus 12. That's gonna be 68 minus 12, and that's going to be 56 degrees. Now I'll put that degree symbol on. And now, let me do the other one. The measure of angle WRV is going to be 3 times 34 plus 22. That's going to be 100 and, whoops, 102 plus 22. Is that right? Yep. And that's going to be 144. That's not right. Something's wrong here. 124. Yeah, one. <laughs> Thank you, Joey, my producer. I'm like, I don't, I don't know where the 144 is coming from. Uh, 124. Now I don't have to check it on the calculator. And let's put the degree simple just 
to be correct. Whew. I can do the multiplication. I just can't do the addition, apparently. All right, so simple enough, right? And you'll see this time and time again in geometry where we use some fact about a geometric diagram. Oh, these two angles are equal. Or these two angles add to 180. Or these two angles add to 90. Or whatever, right? We use that to set up an equation. And then from there on out, it's algebra and it's arithmetic. Apparently, that's the part that's hard for me. Okay, let's keep going. Last problem, exercise number four. Given that angle NMQ is a right angle, answer the following. Letter A, if the measure of angle PMQ is equal to 42 degrees, find the measure of angle NMP. All right, we'll see if you can figure this out. It's not too tough. Well, the real key is, of course, understanding what it means for NMQ to be a right angle. We oftentimes symbolize right angles by putting a little square down in the angle symbol, right? But what it really means for NMQ to be a right angle is that the measure of angle NMQ is equal to 90 degrees, right? So this entire angle has a measure of 90 degrees. Now, if PMQ, PMQ is equal to 42 degrees, and we want to know NMP, right? Then it should be easy. Yet again, this is a situation where we're told the entire measure of an angle, 90 degrees. We're told the measure of one portion of the angle, 42 degrees. We want the measure of the other portion of the angle. That's got to be 90 minus 42. So the measure of angle N. MP is going to be 90 degrees minus 42 degrees. Hopefully I'll get this one right this time, which is 48 degrees. Okay, now let's do one that's a little more challenging. Letter B. If the measure of angle NMP is twice the measure of angle PMQ, find the measure of NMP. All right, well, right now I'm gonna get rid of everything except for that 90 degrees. The 90 degrees still holds, but everything else doesn't. Pause the video now and see if you can figure out how to do this. Now, for some of you, you might be able to just kind of numerically think about it and work it out and stuff like that. Others may want to set up an equation. So let's go for that, right? NMP is twice PMQ. Well, the easiest thing to do in a situation like this is, you know, a little let, you know, let M or let PMQ, measure of PMQ, let's let that equal X, right? That's going to be right here. All right. And then, of course, the measure of angle NMP will be 2X because it's twice it, right? This is equal to 2X. But now we can easily set up an equation because the measure of this angle plus the measure of this angle has to be equal to the measure of the entire angle. So I can now say 2x plus x is equal to 90, 3x is equal to 90, divide both sides by 3, x is equal to 30, right? Now we have to be careful because they want us to find the measure of angle NMP. They want the larger of the two, so the measure of angle NMP is going to be twice that, and it's going to be 60. Now, some of you might have just said, well, I know that the two angles add up to maybe 90. I need one of them to be twice the other one. Oh, those are 60 and 30. That's not bad. You know, there's nothing particularly wrong about that. Of course, if it was something a little bit trickier, like one angle is five times the other one, that might be a little bit harder, and that's where the algebra would be really helpful. All right, let's wrap this lesson up. So today we looked at types of angles and we saw many different types, right? We saw acute, right? Angles between zero and 90. Obtuse, angles that have measures between 90 and 180. Right angles, man, those are critical, right? From our last problem, angles that measure exactly 90 degrees. Straight angles, which are also quite important, okay? Um, those are ones that are gonna measure exactly 180 degrees and look indistinguishable from a straight line. 
All right, and then we have these reflex angles, angles that are larger than 180, but we're not gonna worry too much about those. All right, obviously we're gonna be seeing angles all over the place in all sorts of problems coming up. For now though, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.